What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Forge. I'm Vulcan and today we are taking a look at a unique build, the Gunslinger build. Now as you can see I'm rocking two pistols here. These are the Templar pistols that you pick up from Nihilus in Amarath and they got some interesting things to them. But really the key factor of this build guys and something that I rarely was able to hit before but we actually were able to knock it out this time around is 100% crit chance on my weapons. So every single shot that goes out, every piece of ability, anything that damages the enemy is gonna be a 100% crit chance with my weapons, not necessarily my spells, but any sort of physical damage, which is phenomenal. So I have 417 into agility. I literally took all my points that I had and dumped them into the agility tree. And here's where we're sitting. A plus 45% crit chance modifier and a plus 53% damage modifier for ranged. I love this build guys. So let's go through and let's break it down as we typically would. So like I said, I was rocking the two Templar pistols that you can pick up here in Amarath. Now, nothing out of the ordinary here, 39 to 80 damage, three to six physical damage, 23 protection piercing are my gems, plus 17 to phys physical damage, plus 16 to fire damage. We roll over to the other one, which is actually a stronger pistol, plus 14 to protection piercing, 33 to agility, 22% damage to corrupted enemies, and a plus 15 crit chance on weapons, which that is big, that's a heavy hitter. We come up to my Templar cape, and we have a plus critical or plus 10% critical chance to my weapons, which, as you well know, is a great add. Now, breaking down the actual build itself, I have elemental ammunition. I stick on the shock because the shock seems to do a lot more AoE damage, which is super nice. I have my three traps. These traps will inherit my shock damage, which will create super nice just lightning traps, um, send out shock waves, and deal a decent amount of AoE damage. I decided to go for the sharp shots on this one, not necessarily for the critical chance, but for the increased critical damage. The bleeds and the poisons didn't give me as much oomph as I was looking for, and uh, opting in for sharp shots seems to do a little bit more damage. Spread shot, don't use it too much, I was experimenting a little bit, but the damage just isn't there to justify a rage cost of 120. Holy Dive, um, as I mentioned in other videos, this is a gap closer, or this is a get out of jail free card. As long as you have 282 Umbra, you can zip off to obviously 16 meters away, and it gets you really just out of some sticky situations. Laceration I don't use, but it went on my bars to fill up a slot. I have the single pistol combo, which is your typical shooting combo. It looks a little something like this. So you got a nice little uh, whirlwind type deal. And these are the fastest shooting pistols on the market. So this is really the cap for this speed. So there's one little whirlwind, there you go. And then we have arrow rain as our finisher. Back to that 228% weapon damage per second. This ability is just so good, you really can't give it up, especially in a ranged, physical damage ranged spec. This has got to be your burn ability because it just puts out so much damage. So let's jump into the actual passive tree itself. I took everything in the hunter tree that was not a passive ability except for twin bolt on the crossbow. And then up in this tree, I went to the trickster. Um, obviously I went with momentum. I went with my elemental fury. So momentum gives you plus 6% to physical damage and attack speed after moving, or I'm sorry, when moving and a second after stopping. Then you also have power coating that's going to go. And these are going to give you the lightning bolts, the frost bolts, the fire bolts. They're going to be extremely important. Elemental Fury allows you to regain charges when you cycle through different ammunitions. So very powerful there. Make sure you want to absolutely cap capture that one. Then you also have this plus 3% to physical damage each second, stacking up to 10 times, guys. That's a plus 30% physical damage uh, each second. How awesome is that? Just stacking up straight up to 30% um, until you are hit. So if you're not getting hit, you're going to stay at that 30%. And then I have sub ammunition projectiles. Basically your range shots, if they hit a wall, has a 50% chance to split into three projectiles. It can clear a room pretty quickly. Up north here, we got our assassin tree, plus 10% crit chance to weapons, plus 10 crit damage to weapons and attack speed as well. I did not go for the killer instinct this time around. I decided to invest those points elsewhere. Now down here, we also have meticulous killer, 
plus one to critical damage during eight seconds each time you shoot the same enemy with a ranged weapon, second to ten times, so plus eight, uh, which is pretty great there. And then we also have impairing shots, which are what gives us the uh, impairing ammunition or our increased crit damage and crit chance shots. So there's another overview of the tree that we're going for. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take this 100% crit build for a spin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump down here into a randomized dungeon and see how we perform. All right, so just to make sure guys, 100% uh, crit, 107% crit damage, 417 agility. Let's see what we're working with here. So as you can see, we're just one-shotting all of these enemies, which is fantastic. Um, now, if this build had a little bit more AOE to it, I think we would be just sitting fantastic. Um, you almost have to use the traps in order to you know, put out the AOE damage that you need, but you know, it is what it is. Still an alpha build, it's a very early build, but I think something like this would be really cool later on down the uh, down the road. All right, so arrow rain still just wipes people out. It leaves a nice little lightning field there at the end. And as you can see, we're retaining our 20%, uh, I'm sorry, 80% physical damage with lethal strikes, which is just phenomenal. I mean, that's plus 80% damage essentially. And with 100% crit chance, that's just nasty. That is nasty. All right, we'll go ahead and drop a trap. Basically just delete them off the board. Nothing there. I did get a legendary earlier. I was pretty excited, uh, legendary boots. But yeah, I uh, it's actually this build kind of snuck up on me. Um, I was like, you know, I really wanna do a gunslinger build. I think that would be really cool. And just kind of really see how it works, right? And so I ended up doing that. And, oh gosh, get away from me. And um, just by happen chance, I happened to have all the gear on that bumped me up to 100%. And I was like, okay, let's see how this let's see how this works. And as you can see, it works quite well. Um, we're able to go through and one shot most common enemies with just a, a typical gunshot, typical burst, and our finishing abilities uh, absolutely just delete anything in front of us, which is just nasty. Um, now I recently did the lightning build and I will say the lightning build will take the cake every single time when it comes to AOE damage. Uh, if you're looking for single target damage, just raw output against things in the arena, like, uh, the King Graz Ogre, then this is a build I would choose. If you're looking for more like the horde mode or dungeon delving and you want to basically just get through as quickly as possible, then your AOE is going to be probably your best bet just because you're gonna be able to, yeah, you might not deal as much damage per shot, but that damage is so spread out that you're gonna be able to wipe out groups much quicker. Um, this build really focuses heavily on having rage. And if you don't have rage, then you're not gonna be able to um, use arrow rain. If you can't use arrow rain, you're not gonna be able to do a decent amount of AOE outside of your traps. So as you can see, that little lightning trap went off and it did a decent amount of damage, but you still kind of fall in the same trap, right? Where you're dependent on your traps, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, and you're not really able to fully, I guess, utilize everything in your tool belt. All right, so we got this little 21 Grave Digger. He's gone. Skull Crusher here, who managed to stun me. But yeah, there we go. Pick up this gold. I've been spending a lot of gold lately in the high list, so I need to uh, refill that a little bit. Now, I haven't got any unique items yet, guys, and I'm a little I'm a little peeved at that. You know, I'm, just, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to get some of these interesting named items, and I just haven't been able to get much. All right. So the build itself is extremely versatile. I feel like my mobility is really good in this build, um, mostly because I can just drop my finisher as long as I have, obviously, the rage for it but I feel like I can drop it and I can keep moving. It's not like I'm stuck in one spot. Um, that was one of the complaints I had about the Storm Mage build is yeah, those lightning fingers were literally lights out. I love that ability and I think it's such a cool ability, but it kind of roots you and you're planted uh, while you're doing your big damage abilities. 
Now, I can definitely see um, this build getting nerfed, um, but you know, not necessarily completely out of reach, right? You always have builds in these type of games where it's 100% crit type build, uh, really just kind of seeing how that works and seeing how it plays into the overall meta of leaderboard chasing, the endless dungeons, the dungeon delving, uh, gladiator arenas, horde mode, things like that. I think there's always gonna be a place for that stuff and really it's just going to be do you what what do you sacrifice in order to reach that 100 percent because that's the issue right now is i'm not really sacrificing anything i'm just capping on 100 percent rolling through all these enemies and it's you know i'm leaving just corpses behind so all right let's go ahead and let's drop a trap here uh we're going to build a little bit of rage like so we're going to drop that that's going to kill literally everybody over there and then we're just gonna go through and <laughs> look at all those yellow numbers just pop up as things fall over. All right, let's see what we got in our chest. Fingers crossed, guys. <gasps> uh, nothing, okay. Well, that wraps up this build video, guys. I hope you guys really liked the gameplay. I hope you guys liked the 100% crit build. Um, it's something that you know I, <laughs> I've enjoyed so far. And I really like the gunslinger kind of aspect, you know, just a just a, a lone gunslinger out in the world, just do wielding pistols, taking things down with, you know, obviously some green flame stuff on his hands, looking edgy as hell. But what I want to hear from is you guys. I want to hear from what you guys think about the build itself, what you guys um, like about it. Do you think this is going to be a competitive build? Do you think there needs to be a trade-off for a 100% crit chance and the amount of damage that you're putting out? Or do you think this should be something that each person strives for and tries to pump up to the max? I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I really like this build, but at the same time, I feel like it was really easy to get there, um, especially specking into that. And there's not a really da there's not really downside unless it's AOE damage. And then at that point. Um, you know, I can still use my traps. I can use spread shot if I really, really need to. But honestly, it's the rage cost that holds me back. So I want to hear from you guys. Let's start a conversation downstairs and let me know what you think. Anyway, guys, this has been Vulcan and I am out of here. See you next time.